Urban legends. Every culture, family, or individual has their own urban legends that they like to tell around the campfire or as a bedtime story. Although, these stories have a scary or creepy twist to them that instills fear into the listener. The point of these stories are to scare kids into acting right, or sometimes, to just make someone paranoid. Anyways, this iceberg will dive into every notable urban legend, ranging from stories that you might hear somewhat often to stories that have deeply disturbing backstories. So, without further ado, let's get into the urban legend iceberg. And actually, before we start, subscribe. My goal for the end of the year is 50,000, so it'd be really awesome if you could help me reach that goal. It's free, and you can always change your mind. Now, let's actually get into the video. Starting off with Tier 1, and starting with The Grey Alien. The Grey Alien urban legend is a well-known and enduring myth in popular culture. These beings are typically described as extraterrestrial creatures with grey skin large heads, almond-shaped black eyes, and thin bodies. The legend often involves claims of alien abductions and encounters, where people report being taken aboard UFOs and being subjected to various experiments or examinations by these gray aliens. The legend became popular in the 20th century, fueled by UFO sightings, conspiracy theories, and media depictions. The Roswell UFO incident in 1947 also contributed to this fascination with the gray aliens as some claimed that a crashed UFO and alien bodies were found by the U.S. military. Loch Ness Monster The Loch Ness Monster urban legend centers around the belief in a mysterious creature inhabiting Loch Ness, a deep, freshwater lake in Scotland, described as a long-necked, humped creature resembling a dinosaur. This elusive monster is said to lurk beneath the lake's dark waters. Reports of sightings date back to as early as the 20th century, but it was a 1934 photograph known as the Surgeon's Photograph that gained widespread attention. While later revealed to be a hoax, it contributed significantly to the legend's popularity. Over the years, numerous expeditions, sonar scans, and investigations have sought to prove or debunk the existence of the Loch Ness Monster. While many sightings have been reported, no conclusive evidence have ever been found. Area 51 The Area 51 legend revolves around a highly secretive U.S. military facility located in the Nevada desert, known as Area 51. This place has been shrouded in mystery and conspiracy theories for decades. This legend suggests that Area 51 is the site of extraterrestrial encounters in the storage of alien technology. It's often linked to the Roswell UFO incident of 1947, as I mentioned earlier, with some claiming that recovered alien spacecraft and beans are hidden at Area 51. Additionally, stories of reverse engineering advanced technology, underground bases, and secret government experiments have fueled this legend. The extreme secrecy surrounding the facility, including restricted airspace and armed guards, has only intensified speculation. While there's no concrete evidence to support any of these claims, Area 51 seems a focal point for UFO enthusiasts, conspiracy theorists, and popular culture. It has been featured in numerous movies, books, and TV shows, solidifying its place as one of the most iconic urban legends related to government secrecy and extraterrestrial mysteries. Bigfoot The Bigfoot legend centers around the idea of a large, elusive, and humanoid creature inhabiting remote wilderness areas, particularly in North America, commonly described as a towering, ape-like figure covered in hair or fur. Bigfoot is known by various names in different regions, such as Sasquatch in the Pacific Northwest. The reports of Bigfoot sightings date back centuries, with numerous anecdotal accounts and blurry photographs contributing to the legend's popularity. However, there is no scientific evidence to confirm the existence of such a creature. The legend has spurred countless expeditions, investigations, and TV shows dedicated to searching for Bigfoot. Despite the lack of conclusive proof, many enthusiasts remain convinced that the cryptid exists, while others view it as a folklore or urban legend deeply rooted in the wilderness lore of North America. Boogeyman The Boogeyman is a legendary figure in various cultures, often used to frighten children into good behavior. The concept varies across different regions, but it generally represents a malevolent supernatural being or monster that lurks in the shadows and preys on the misbehaving or disobedient children. 
The boogeyman is a timeless and universal part of folklore, known by different names in different cultures. In the United States, it's sometimes referred to as just the boogeyman. In many stories, the boogeyman is used by parents or caregivers to instill fear in children, warning them that if they don't behave or go to sleep, the boogeyman will come for them. Men in Black the Men in Black urban legend revolves around mysterious individuals or agents who are believed to visit and intimidate witnesses of UFO sightings or encounters with extraterrestrial beings. These men are often described as wearing black suits, sunglasses, and exhibiting an air of intimidation. The legend suggests that these men in black are government agents or even aliens themselves, tasked with suppressing information about UFOs and alien encounters. They are said to use various tactics, including threats and intimidation to silence witnesses and confiscate evidence. While there have been many reports and stories about encounters with the men in black, there's no concrete evidence to confirm their existence or even their true identity. Bloody Mary The Bloody Mary legend is a spooky and enduring urban legend that involves a ghostly apparition appearing in a mirror when certain conditions are met. The most common ritual involves chanting Bloody Mary a specific number of times, often 3 or 13, while looking into a darkened mirror. It is believed that it is a ritual that if it's performed correctly, the ghost of Bloody Mary, a woman who have may survive a tragic or gruesome death, will appear in the mirror. The legend has variations, with some versions suggesting that Bloody Mary may harm or haunt the person who summons her. It has been a popular game or dare among children and teenagers at sleepovers and parties, often designed to induce fear and suspense. Candyman The Candyman is a fictional character in urban legend associated with a supernatural killer who is summoned by saying his name multiple times while facing a mirror, typically in a darkened room. The most common chant is Candyman repeated five times, similar to the other mirror-based legends like Bloody Mary. In popular culture, the Candyman is often depicted as a hook-handed, vengeful spirit or killer who appears to those who summon him and brings terror or death. The legend has inspired a series of horror movies with the first film titled Candyman, released in 1992. Alright, now onto Tier 2 starting off with The Spider Bite. The Spider Bite urban legend often revolves a person who wakes up with a mysterious and painful spider bite on their body, typically on a limb or somewhere easily accessible. As the story unfolds, the person's condition worsens, and they seek medical attention. Upon examination, the doctor informs them that a highly venomous spider laid eggs under their skin when it bit them, and surgery is required to remove the spider eggs. In some versions of the legend, the eggs have hatched, leading to even more dramatic and horrifying consequences. The Hook The Hook is an urban legend, and it's a classic tale that has been told in various forms for many years, and it usually goes like this. A young couple is out in a secluded area, often a forest or a lover's lane, when they hear a news report on the radio about a mental patient who has escaped from a nearby institution. The report warns that the patient is dangerous and has a hook for a hand. Naturally, the couple becomes frightened and decides to leave the area. When they return home, they discover a hook hanging from the car door handle or somewhere on the car itself. The implication is that the escaped patient was nearby and they narrowly escaped a dangerous encounter. The Kidney Thieves urban legend is a well-known and persistent tale that has circulated for many years. It typically involves an unsuspecting person who wakes up in a bathtub full of ice, often in a hotel room or a strange location. They discover a note that says their kidneys have been removed and are being sold on the black market. This urban legend is purely fictional and has no basis in reality. It is often used as a cautionary tale or a creepy story to illustrate the dangers of trusting strangers or traveling alone. While there have actually been cases of organ trafficking in the world, they are extremely rare, and the scenario depicted in the legend is highly unlikely to occur in real life, but you never know. Aren't You Glad You Didn't Turn On The Lights is a popular urban legend about a young girl at university whose best friend gets brutally murdered while she's getting her things, and she's later stalked by the killer. So let me just give you the broad explanation of the story, and how I think it should be told. Two roommates in college were in the same science class. The teacher had just reminded them about the midterm the next day when one roommate, let's just call her Julie, got asked to this big bash by the hottest guy in school. The other roommate, Meg, had pretty much no interest in going, and being a good student, she took notes on what the midterm was about. After the entire period of flirting with her date, Julie was totally unprepared for her test, while Meg was completely prepared for a major study date with her books. 
At the end of the day, Julie spent hours getting ready for the party while Meg kept studying. Julie tried to get Meg to go, but she was insistent that she would study and pass the test. The girls were rather close, and Julie didn't like leaving Meg alone to be the be bored while she was out having a blast. Julie finally gave up, using the excuse that she would cram in homeroom the next day. Julie went to the party and had the time of her life with her date. She headed back to the dorm around 2 a.m. and decided not to wake Meg. She went to bed nervous about the midterm and decided she would wake up early to ask Meg for help. She woke up and went to ask Meg. Meg was lying on her stomach, apparently sound asleep. Julie rolled Meg over to reveal Meg's terrified face. Julie, concerned, turned on the desk lamp. Meg's study stuff was still open and had blood all over it. Meg had been slaughtered. Julie, in horror, fell to the floor and looked up to see, written on the wall, in Meg's blood. Aren't you glad he didn't turn on the lights? The Killer in the Back Seat This legend involves a woman who is driving and being followed by a car or a truck. The mysterious pursuer flashes his high beams and tailgates her and sometimes even rams her vehicle. When she finally makes it home, she realizes that the driver tries to warn her that there is a man, or a murderer, hiding in the back seat. Each time the man sat up to attack her, the driver behind had used his high beams to scare the killer, causing him to duck back down. In some other versions, the woman stops for gas, and the attendant asked her to come inside to sort out a problem with her credit card. Inside the station, he asks if she's known that there was a man in the back seat. In another version, she sees a doll on the road in her mirrors, stops, and then the man gets in the back. In another version, the woman gets into a car and then a crazed person leaps out from nowhere and starts shouting gibberish and slamming her, their hands on the car. The woman quickly manages to escape from them, but no matter how far, which direction she drives, every time she stops, the same crazy person appears and attacks her. The woman then arrives at a police station and tells the police about the crazed person. The police calm her down and offer to drive her back to her house but when they go with her to get her things from a car, they find the killer hiding behind the driver's seat. As it turns out, the crazed person that was chasing the woman was the ghost of one of the killer's victims, trying to either warn the woman or get at the killer. Humans can lick too. That's just a weird name for the entry, but let's get into it. This is a story in urban legend, so I'll just tell the story. A very young girl is home alone for the first time with her only dog for company. Listening to the news, she hears of a killer on the loose in her neighborhood. Terrified, she locks all the doors and windows, but she forgets about the basement window and it is still left unlocked. She goes to bed, taking her dog to her room with her and letting it sleep under her bed. She wakes up in the night to hear a dripping sound coming from the bathroom. The dripping noise frightens her, but she is too scared to get out of bed and find out what it is. To reassure herself, she reaches a hand toward the door for the dog and is rewarded by a reassuring lick of her hand. The next morning when she wakes up, she goes to the bathroom for a drink of water, only to find her dead, mutilated dog hanging in the shower with his blood slowly dripping onto the tiles. On the shower wall written in the dog's blood are the words, humans can lick too. And holy crap, I just got goosebumps from reading that story. That is just creepy. And the fate of the dog varies from the dog simply being hanged to it being skinned disemboweled or otherwise mutilated the message is sometimes written on the floor or on the bathroom mirror rather than on the wall some versions inside the parents return in their discovery of the killer hiding elsewhere in the house frequently in the basement the girl's bedroom closet or under her bed in other versions the girl's parents arrive back in the morning and ask if her daughter had a good night when she tells them that her dog had kept her calm by licking her hand, she is told that the dog in question had been locked either in the basement or outside. This story either ends with the killer never being found and the girl dying. Alright, now into tier 3, body in the bed. The legend goes that a couple checked into a hotel to discover a foul smell in the room. At night, they decided to call a member of staff to complain and discover that the smell is coming from the bed. The member of staff looks under the bed to find that the couple had been sleeping on top of a rotting body of a girl that stuffed inside of a box. And what makes this story even creepier is that this has happened more than once in cities like Las Vegas, Kansas City, Missouri, Atlantic City, New Jersey, Florida, and California. So, this isn't just a made-up urban legend, but has happened a lot more than once. Body in the water tank. 
The case of Alyssa Lamb's death remains one of the most perplexing and unsettling mysteries in recent years. Alyssa Lamb, a 20-year-old Canadian student, was on a solo trip to Los Angeles in January 2013 when she checked into the Cecil Hotel, a historic but notorious establishment known for its troubled history and association with crime and dark events. The intrigue surrounding Alyssa Lamb's death began when she disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Her parents reported her missing after not hearing from her for several days. The hotel staff and other guests claimed that they had seen her acting strangely in the days leading up to her disappearance. This behavior was captured in a chilling elevator surveillance video that showed Alyssa pushing multiple buttons, peering out as if she was hiding from someone and making erratic hand gestures. The footage is haunting and has fueled countless theories and speculations. The search for Alyssa Lamb came to a tragic end on February 19th, 2013 when her lifeless body was discovered in one of the hotel's rooftop water tanks. To add to the disturbing nature of her death, hotel guests had been using the water from the tank for drinking, bathing, and other purposes while she had been missing. An autopsy report later determined that Le Alyssa Lamb's death was due to accidental drowning, which I don't know how that makes sense, but however, this finding did not quell the public's curiosity and suspicions. Many questioned the and theories emerged in the wake of her death. Some believe that she may have been the victim of foul play, while others speculated about paranormal or supernatural causes. The Cecil Hotel's history of violent deaths and its connection to infamous criminals like Richard Ramirez only added to the aura of mystery surrounding the case. The internet played a significant role in the widespread attention of the case received. Web sleuths, armchair detectives, and amateur investigators dissected every detail analyzed the surveillance footage frame by frame and proposed various theories, from mental health issues to sinister conspiracies. The case also inspired popular documentaries and books, further fueling public interest. Despite the intense scrutiny, Alyssa Lamb's death was officially ruled as an accidental drowning with her bipolar disorder being a contributing factor. The eerie elevator video, which initially fueled speculation about foul play or paranormal events, was explained as a manifestation of her mental health struggles. Bipolar disorder can lead to manic or depressive episodes, and her behavior in the elevator may have been a manifestation of her psychological state during that time. The Man Under the Car is a classic urban legend that has been circulated in various forums for years. This story typically involves a person who is driving alone at night and notices an unusual noise coming from their car. When they stop to investigate, they discover a mysterious figure hiding underneath the vehicle. The details of the story can vary, but it often includes elements of fear, suspense, and the unexpected. In some versions, the person under the car is a criminal or a dangerous individual. In others, it turns out to be a well-intentioned person trying to warn the driver of a dangerous situation. Urban legends like the man under the car often serve as cautionary tales, reminding people to be cautious when traveling alone at night or in unfamiliar places. While these stories are typically fictional and meant to entertain or spook listeners, they tap into common fears and anxieties about personal safety and the unknown. Halloween Hanging this eerie tale tends to take various forms and adaptations, but its core elements often revolve around a chilling discovery made by unsuspecting individuals on Halloween night. In one version of the legend, a group of teenagers decides to venture into a desolate, supposedly haunted area late at night, where they've heard whispers of strange occurrences. As they explore, they stumble upon an unsettling scene, a lifeless body suspended from a tree by a hangman's noose, eerily swaying in the wind. The shock and terror of this discovery haunt them for the rest of their lives. Another variant involves a family returning home after a night of trick-or-treating, only to find a gruesome sight in their own backyard or basement, a ghastly figure hanging lifelessly from a makeshift gallows. The family members are left traumatized, with questions about who would have committed such a horrible act. The Halloween hanging legend is only accompanied by warnings to stay away from certain locations on Halloween night, particularly those with dark histories or sinister reputations. It plays on our primal fear of the unknown and the sense of vulnerability associated with being out in the dark during the spooky holiday. While the Halloween hanging urban legend has circulated for years, it's important to remember that this story is fictional and doesn't really even have a real story that goes along with it or anything that happened in reality. Cropsy is an urban legend and unsettling piece of folklore, particularly well known in parts of the United States, especially on the East Coast. 
It is often associated with Staten Island, New York, and has inspired numerous documentaries, books, and horror movies. The Cropsey legend typically centers around an escaped mental patient or an eerie disfigured man who lurks in the shadows, preying on children and unsuspecting victims. According to the legend, Cropsey kidnaps children, often from local neighborhoods or campsites, and takes them to be an abandoned or remote location where terrible things are said to happen. The legend has been used as a cautionary tale to children and scare them into behaving, with parents warning them about a sinister Cropsey who would come for them if they didn't listen or stay close to home. In reality, the Cropsey legend has been linked to a real-life series of child disappearances and murders in the 1970s and 1980s on Staten Island. A man named Andre Rond, who has a history of mental illness, was convicted in connection with some of these cases. The legend and the actual crimes became intertwined, further fueling the fear and fascination surrounding Cropsey. Corpse in the Chimney This gruesome tale often unfolds in a variety of ways, but the core premise remains constant. A homeowner discovers a horrifying secret lurking within the confines of their own home. In one version of the legend, a family moves into an old, decrepit house with a charming, rustic fireplace. As they settle in, they begin to notice a persistent and putrid stench emanating from the chimney. At first, they dismiss it as a simple case of needing a chimney sweep. However, as days turn into weeks, the odor intensifies to a nauseating level. Unable to tolerate the smell any longer, they decide to investigate the chimney. Armed with a flashlight and a sense of dread, they peer into the dark, Sooty shaft and make a ghastly discovery. An emancipated, decaying body lodged within the narrow flue. Panic and horror grip the family as they realize that someone or something had been trapped in their chimney. And the disturbing truth behind this gruesome find begins to unravel. The details of the legend can vary widely. Sometimes it involves a long-lasting family member who va mysteriously vanished years ago, while in other versions it's a heinous crime committed by a previous homeowner who sought to conceal their dark deeds. The Toxic Fumes Lady The Toxic Fumes Lady, also known as Gloria Ramirez, was a 31-year-old woman who was brought to Riverside General Hospital in Riverside, California on February 19, 1994. She was suffering from advanced cervical cancer and was experiencing severe pain and difficulty breathing. Her medical history included complications with, from cancer treatment and other health issues. What made Gloria Ramirez's case particularly unusual and tragic was the sequence of events that unfolded during her treatment. When medical staff attempted to draw blood from her, they noticed a strange garlic-like odor coming from her body. Some even reported that her skin had an oily sheen and appeared to be a giving an off mysterious vapor. A few of the healthcare workers who came into contact with her began to experience symptoms like fainting, dizziness, and shortness of breath. Some even developed muscle spasms and nausea. In response to the bizarre situation, the hospital staff moved Ramirez to an isolation room and continued their efforts to stabilize her. Unfortunately, despite her their efforts, she went into cardiac arrest and was pronounced dead shortly after her arrival at the hospital. The hospital called in various agencies to investigate this incident including the Riverside Fire Department, the California Department of Health Services, and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. The investigators believe that some sort of chemical exposure might have been responsible for the unusual odors and symptoms experienced by the medical staff. Several theories were proposed to explain what happened to Gloria Ramirez. One theory was that she might have been exposed to diamethyl sulfoxide, a substance that can be used as a solvent and produce a garlic-like odor when metabolized by the body. Another theory suggested that her cancer treatment might have caused a buildup of toxic chemicals in her body, which was then released during her hospitalization. Ultimately, the exact cause of Gloria Ramirez's death remains disputed, and the case is still subject of medical and scientific debate. The incident prompted discussions about the safety of healthcare workers and the need for improved protocols for handling potentially hazardous situations in hospitals. What do you think happened to Gloria Ramirez? Alright, now on to tier 4, starting off with the Goatman. The Goatman is a fascinating and eerie urban legend that has captured the imaginations of people across the United States for many years. The mythological creature is said to be a bizarre hybrid, combining the physical characteristics of a human and a goat. Its origins are shrouded in mystery and has become a prominent figure in American folklore. The Goatman legend has numerous regional variations, with each local adding its unique twist to the story. 
One common element across these tales is the creature's unsettling ability to mimic human voices. It's believed that the Goatman uses this skill to lure unsuspecting victims into its clutches. In some versions of the legend, the Goatman dwells in rural areas, deep forests, or near abandoned places. Its presence is often associated with feelings of dread and unease, making it a popular subject for campfire tales and spooky stories told in the dead of night. One particularly famous version of the Goatman legend comes from Maryland where it is said to reside in the forest of Prince George's County. According to this local variation, the Goatman was originally a scientist experimenting with the crossing of human and goat DNA. Something went terribly wrong during this experiment though, resulting in the creation of the grotesque Goatman. This tragic origin story layers a tragedy to the creature's mythos. Despite the many stories and sightings reported over the years, there is no concrete evidence to support this existence of the Goatman, and it remains firmly rooted in the realm of urban legends and folklore. Dog Boy In the eerie depths of urban folklore, the legend of Dog Boy emerges like a shadowy specter. The chilling tale has haunted the imaginations of many, with variations that span different regions and cultures. The story typically revolves around a young child who, under mysterious and tragic circumstances, finds themselves abandoned or lost in the wilderness, left to fend for themselves. They are said to be raised by a pack of wild dogs. Over time, the child adopts the behaviors and mannerisms of their canine companions, becoming more animal than human. As the years pass, stories of the dog boy spread through whispered conversations and campfire tales. Locals speak of a feral creature lurking in the depths of the forest, surviving on a diet of raw meat and scavenged scraps. Some versions of the legend claim that the dog boy possesses supernatural abilities, such as the power to communicate with animals or even transform into a wolf. Encounters with the dog boy are described as a terrifying experiences with witnesses recounting unsettling encounters in the wilderness, tales of eerie howls echoing through the night, and sightings of a wild wolf-like figure add to the mystique of the urban legend. Despite its spine-tingling allure, it's essential to remember that the dog boy legend, like many urban legends, is just a work of fiction, and no substantial evidence has proved its existence, but maybe there is a dog boy out there. The Mothman urban legend is unique to say the least. This creature first gained notoriety in the small town of Point Pleasant, West Virginia during the mid-1960s. It is typically described as a tall, winged humanoid with a wingspan that can reach up to 10 feet, and its most distinctive feature is its piercing glowing red eyes. The Mothman legend really took flight in November 1966, when several residents of Point Pleasant reported sightings of this unusual creature. Witnesses described it as terrifying and has an unsettling presence. Its sudden appearances, often accompanied by unsettling feelings of dread, sent shockwaves through its community. What makes the Mothman legend even more intriguing is the association with tragic events. The most notable incident was the collapse of the Silver Bridge on December 15, 1967, which resulted in the loss of 46 lives. Some believe that the Mothman sightings were a warning of an omen or of impending disaster, leading to speculation that the creature was somehow connected to the bridge collapse. Over the years, numerous theories have emerged to explain the Mothman phenomenon. Some suggest it's a cryptid, a previously undiscovered species of creature, or others view it as a supernatural being or a manifestation of the collective fear and anxiety of the time. Skeptics argue that the Mothman sightings may be attributed to misidentifications of birds, owls, or other animals. But what do you think? Is there a Mothman somewhere flying around in West Virginia? Or just a misidentification? Black-Eyed Children the origins of the Black Eyed Children legend remain somewhat elusive. While it became more widely known in the late 1990s and early 2000s, it's challenging to pinpoint the exact source of this first account. However, it is often associated with Brian Bethel, a journalist who claimed to have a disturbing encounter with BEKs in 1996, which BEK stands for Black Eyed Children, while he detailed in an online forum. Descriptions of the black-eyed children tend to follow a consistent pattern. Witnesses describe them as children or teenagers, typically between the ages of 6 and 16, with pale or almost porcelain-like skin. The most striking and unsettling feature, of course, is their entirely black eyes, devoid of any white or color. 
This distinct characteristic is which sets the black-eyed children apart from other paranormal or supernatural entities. The encounters with black-eyed children often occur in isolated or remote areas, as well as on doorsteps or in parking lots during the evening or the night. These beings usually approach individuals or vehicles, seeking some form of assistance, such as asking for a ride, asking for money, or permission to enter a home. Their requests are often incestuous on the surface, but what sets these encounters apart is the overwhelming sense of fear or dread experienced by those who interact with them. Witnesses frequently report feelings of intense and irrational fear during these encounters, often describing it as an instinctual response to the presence of the black-eyed children. This fear can be so overpowering that it compels people to refuse the children's requests. I mean, if I saw a kid with completely black eyes, I probably would do the same. But even though their stories and appearances seem relatively incestuous, there are accounts of people who have reluctantly complied with these requests, only to later regret their decisions, believing they only narrowly escaped a malevolent force. Some theories attempt to explain that the origin, origins of the black-eyed children, some suggest that they are supernatural entities, perhaps demons or otherworldly beings, and others propose that they are an urban legend or modern folklore, such as like Slenderman or the Chupacabra, that has taken on a life of their own in the age of the internet. Skeptics tend to view the BEK's encounters as products of overactive imagination or manifestations of the fear of the unknown. They argue with the sense of dread experienced during these encounters may be the result of an eerie and unsettling appearance of the black-eyed children rather than any supernatural cause. But what do you think? Is there just random kids walking around in parking garages, asking people for money, and then doing something, you know, evil? I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. The Chupacabra The Chupacabra is a legendary creature from Latin American folklore, particularly in New Mexico, Puerto Rico, and other Spanish-speaking regions. Its name translates to goat sucker in Spanish, which hints at it as a supposed behavior of attacking livestock, particularly goats, and draining their blood. Depictions of the chupacabra may vary, but it is often depicted as a reptilian or alien-like creature with spikes or quills along its back, sharp claws, and red or glowing eyes. Its primary characteristic is the act of extinguishing animals, leaving them with a puncture wounds and drained of blood, sort of like a vampire. The legend of the chupacabra gained widespread attention in the mid-1990s when reports of livestock deaths and sightings of this mysterious creature began to surface. These reports often described animals, especially goats and chickens, found dead with puncture wounds and no apparent cause of death. This led to a frenzy of speculation and fear in affected communities. Various theories have emerged to explain the chupacabra phenomenon. Some believe it to just be a cryptid or unknown and undiscovered species of creature. Others view it as a supernatural or extraterrestrial being sent to Earth for unknown purposes, sort of like an alien. Skeptics, on the other hand, suggest that the chupacabra sightings and livestock deaths can be attributed to more conventional causes, such as disease, predation by wild animals, or human activities. Teke 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 is a chilling urban legend from Japan. It tells the story of a vengeful spirit or ghost, often depicted as a young woman who has been tragically disfigured or mutilated, typically by a train accident. Her name, Teke Teke, is derived from the sound she makes as she moves. The legend usually involves Teke Teke lurking in urban areas, such as train stations, alleys, or buildings, especially at night. When encountering an unsuspecting victim, she approaches them, dragging her upper body or torso along the ground, as she has no lower half. She moves incredibly fast, despite her gruesome appearance. The terrifying part of the Teke Teke story is that if she catches you, she will slice you in half, mirroring her own gruesome fate. To escape her, one must answer a riddle or outrun her, which is often depicted as an almost impossible task given her speed. La Llorona, also known as the Weeping Woman, is a famous legend in Mexican and Latin American folklore. The story of La Llorona has many variations, but its core theme revolves around a ghastly woman who mourns the loss of her child. The most common version of the legend centers on a woman named Maria, who falls in love with a wealthy man and has his children. However, her lover eventually abandons her, leaving her to raise the child alone. In a fit of despair, Maria drowns her own children in the river. Realizing the gravity of her actions, she is overcome with guilt and grief and begins to roam the night. Weeping and searching for her lost children, La Llorona is often depicted as a ghostly figure dressed in white, 
Her face obscured by her mourning veil and her cries and wails are said to be heard near bodies of water, especially rivers, as she continues to search for her children. Some versions of the legend suggest that she kidnaps or harms other children, mistaking them for her own. Charlie No Face Raymond Robinson's life took a tragic turn at a young age when, as a child, he suffered a severe electrical accident. This accident left him disfigured, with severe facial injuries that required him to wear a mask to cover his disfigurement. His eyesight was also permanently damaged, rendering him blind. Un understandably, this left Robinson with a life of hardship and challenges, but he adapted as best he could as Robinson grew older. He developed a desire for solitude and independence. He found solace in nighttime walks along a rural stretch of road near Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. These walks allowed him to escape the confines of his home and experience a sense of freedom and serenity that was difficult to find during the day. However, it was during these nocturnal walks that eventually led to the creation of the urban legend surrounding him. Passerbys, especially those with unfamiliar with his backstory, would encounter Robinson in the dark, wearing his mask and walking along the road. Given his appearance, it's not surprising that some people were startled or frightened by his sight. In small towns, stories and rumors can spread quickly, often taking on a life of their own. This was the case with Robinson. Over time, tales of the mysterious figure who wandered the road at night became increasingly embellished. Some claimed that his face glowed in the dark, while others said he had a green face or even supernatural powers. The legend of Charlie No Face began to draw curious visitors to the area, some hoping to catch a glimpse of the mysterious figure. Robinson, however, remained a reclusive and private individual who simply wanted to enjoy his nighttime walks in peace. In truth, Raymond Robinson was not a malevolent or supernatural figure. He was just a man who suffered a terrible accident in his youth and had to adapt to his life of challenges and isolation. His story serves as a reminder for how urban legends can sometimes arise from misunderstandings, fear of the unfamiliar, and the human tendency to embellish stories over time. The Slip-Mouthed Woman the slip-mouthed woman, also known as Kuchikasake Onna in Japanese, which I most likely mispronounced, but oh well, is a terrifying urban legend originating from Japan. The legend centers around a vengeful female spirit or a ghost who is a disfigured slip mouth. According to the legend, the slip mouthed woman was once a beautiful woman who was either betrayed or disfigured by her husband or lover, resulting in her gruesome appearance. She is often depicted as wearing a mask or a surgical mask to conceal her disfigurement. The eerie part about this legend involves her encounters with unsuspecting individuals, often children or pedestrians walking alone at night. She approaches them and asks a seemingly innocent question like, Am I beautiful? Or do you think I'm pretty? If the person responds negatively or with fear, she reveals her terrifying secret. She removes her mask to reveal her grotesque, slip mouth, which extends from ear to ear. Once her disfigurement is exposed, she typically chases the person, brandishing a sharp object or knife with intent to harm or kill them. However, if the person responds positively, expressing that she's beautiful, she spares them but then proceeds to ask the same question again, creating an eerie and unsettling cycle. The Jersey Devil Also known as the Leeds Devil, is a legendary creature said to inhabit the Pine Barrens of southern New Jersey, USA. This cryptid is described as a bizarre and malevolent creature with a combination of features including hooves, bat-like wings, a goat's head, horns, and a forked tail. The legend of the Jersey Devil has been around for centuries and has its root in local folklore. According to one popular origin story, it is said to be the cursed offspring of Mother Leeds, a woman who, in frustration, exclaimed that her thirteenth child would be the devil, when the child was born with deformities and soon transformed into the fearsome creature. It flew off into the Pine Barrens, where it's said to have lurked ever since. Sightings and reports of the Jersey Devil have been sporadic over the years, with depictions varying widely. Some claim to have heard eerie screams or seen strange tracks in the woods, attributing this phenomenon to the creature. While many sightings have been debunked as hoaxes or misidentifications of other animals, but in New Jersey, is there just some Jersey Devil out there in the woods? Who knows? Krampus Krampus is a mythical creature from Central European folklore, particularly in Austria, Germany, Hungary, and other Alpine regions. Unlike the jolly figure of Santa Claus, who rewards good children, Krampus is a dark and menacing counterpart who punishes naughty children during the Christmas season. Krampus is often depicted as a horned, anthropomorphic creature with a sinister appearance, kind of like the devil. He has sharp, fanged teeth, a long pointed tongue, and cloven hooves. 
He usually carries chains, bells, and a bundle of birch branches called a rutin or a whip, which he uses to swat or lash out at misbehaving children. In some traditions, he also carries a sack or a basket to carry away particularly naughty children. On the night of December 5th, known as Krampus people in some European countries participate in parades and festivals where individuals dress up as Krampus. These events can be both playful and frightening, with Krampus figures running through the streets, scaring spectators, and even playfully swatting them with their birch branches. Bunny Man And this isn't talking about the Easter Bunny. But the legend of Bunny Man begins with the premise that a menstrual institution known by various names in different versions of each story was slated for a closure due to the budget constraints and concern about its conditions. During the process of transferring the inmates to a new facility, one particularly dangerous individual managed to escape from the transport. This escapee, often referred to as the Bunny Man, is believed to have taken refuge in the dense woods surrounding the area adopting a white bunny suit as disguise. The inclusion of the bunny costume in the legend adds a macabre and settling twist to the story. The bunny man is often depicted as wielding an axe or another weapon, making him a terrifying presence in local lore. Reports of sightings and encounters with the bunny man typically involve individuals who venture near the infamous Bunny Man Bridge, which is located in Clifton, Virginia. This historic bridge, originally known as the Colchester Overpass has become linked to the legend. Some versions of the story claim that the Bunny Man haunts the bridge, while others suggest he lurks in the surrounding woods around it. And the Bunny Man legend has been passed down through generations and generations, and is a staple of local folklore in Northern Virginia. It has not only sparked fear, but also curiosity, drawing these intrigued by urban legends and the paranormal to explore the area around the bridge. Over the years, the bridge has seen its fair share of vandalism and urban exploration, contributing to its reputation as a mysterious and eerie location. Tier 5 Spring Heeled Jack Spring Heeled Jack is a legendary and enigmatic figure whose exploits have become a significant part of 19th century English folklore. This anonymous character has renowned for his bizarre appearance and seemingly unsupernatural abilities, which both terrified and captivated the public. Depictions of Spring Heeled Jack often depicted him as a tall, thin man with sharp, claw like fingers and piercing, glowing red eyes. His most extraordinary attribute was his incredibly agility, earning him the nickname spring Heel Jack. He was said to leap incredible heights and distances in a single bound, which only added to the mystique surrounding him. What makes spring Heel Jack particularly intriguing are the numerous reports of his encounters. Victims claimed that he would suddenly appear, often in a dark or secluded area, and subject them to to terrifying ordeals. Reports included instances where he would breathe blue flames, scratch his victims, and exhibit other inexplicable behaviors. Young women were often the targets of his attack. The legend of spring Jack was not limited to one specific location. Reports of his activities emerged from various parts in England, was a particularly concentration in London and its surrounding areas. His sinister reputation and the widespread tales about his antics created a sense of unease and fear among the populace. To this day, the true identity and purpose of the spring Heel Jack remain shrouded in mystery and controversy. Some believe he was a supernatural being, while others argue that he may have been a hoax or a criminal using theatrical tricks to frighten people. Regardless of the explanations, spring Heel Jack has left an undeliable mark on British folklore and continues to inspire fascination and speculation in both historical and popular culture contexts. The Monkey Man of New Delhi In the early 2000s, the bustling streets of New Delhi, India, were gripped by a chilling and perplexing urban legend, the Monkey Man. This bizarre creature was said to haunt the city's nights, its appearance a nightmarish fusion of human and monkey features. Witnesses described a humanoid body with a head resembling a monkey and sharp, metallic claws that gleamed ominously in the dark. The Monkey Man was not merely a tale of the supernatural, and it brought genuine fear and chaos to the city. Reports emerged on the mysterious attacks, with victims claiming to have been scratched or bitten by this enigmatic entity. It seems to prefer the cover of night, striking terror into the hearts of those it encountered before vanishing without a trace. The legend of the Monkey Man quickly spiraled into a citywide panic. Residents began taking drastic measures to protect themselves, barricading their homes and staying indoors after sunset. News outlets fueled this hysteria with extensive coverage, further cementing the creature's presence in the public imagination. Yet, amidst the fear and frenzy, skepticism lingered. Some believe that the Monkey Man was a manifestation of mass hysteria, superstition, or even the work of criminals using disguises to exploit their chaos. 
As swiftly as it emerged, the Monkey Man legend eventually faded from the forefront of public consciousness, leaving behind unanswered questions and unresolved mysteries. While many dismissed it as a mere myth, others continued to ponder the strange and unsettling chapter of the Monkey Man in New Delhi's modern folklore. Paul is dead is a legendary conspiracy theory that gained notoriety in the late 1960s, centered around Paul McCartney of the Beatles. According to this theory, McCartney died in a car accident in 1966 and was secretly replaced by a lookalike to avoid public mourning and financial losses for the band and their record label. This conspiracy theory thrived on various supposed clues found in the Beatles songs, album covers, and lyrics. One of the most famous examples is the Abbey Road album cover which some interpret as a funeral procession, with McCartney walking barefoot out of step with the other band members. Other clues were believed to be the hidden in the song lyrics, particularly when songs were played backward. The rumor was initially propagated by college students and quickly spread, leading to widespread speculation and even panic among Beatles fans. However, it was largely debunked by the band, their management, and McCartney himself. In interviews and public appearances, McCartney has humorously addressed the theory and confirmed that he is very much alive. Red Cloak In the shadowy realms of Japanese folklore, the figure known as Akamanto, or Red Cape, weaves a chilling and malevolent tale. This haunting entity is said to lurk within the confines of public restrooms, particularly in schools or public buildings where it awaits unsuspecting victims. Akamanto is often depicted as a spectral being, shrouded in crimson cloak or cape, sometimes concealing its face with a mask. Its eerie presence is most likely commonly encountered in the last stall of the restroom. The legend unfolds as a sinister game of choice. When an unfortunate individual enters the restroom and takes refuge in the stall, Akamanto appears without warning. With a soft, ominous voice, it poses a seemingly innocent question, a choice between two colors, red paper or blue paper, or red cape or blue cape. Herein lies the cruel twist of fate. Regardless of the response given, Akamanto unleashes his malevolence upon the chosen victim. Those who dare to select the right option may face a gruesome end, with their throat cruelly slit or subjected to violent harm. Opting for the blue choice offers no salvation either, as it may lead to strangulation or suffocation. Efforts to outsmart or escape Akamanto often prove futile, as it possesses a supernatural ability to track down and exact its terrible punishment upon those who dare cross its path. The Red Room. This is a chilling tale rooted in the darkest corners of the internet. It revolves around a mysterious and sinister online space where anonymous people reign supreme. In this legend, the Red Room emerges as a website or chat room. Its very name is just scary itself. Those who dare enter are confronted by a blood room background that seem to pulse with darkness. Their identities are concealed by usernames, adding to an element of the anonymous idea. Within this virtual realm, participants experience a relentless onslaught of disturbing messages from the other people in the room. Messages that seem to know their deepest, darkest secrets and fears. It's as if the Red Room has a darkness sentience of its own, probing into the minds of its captives. But what truly sets the Red Room apart is its inescapable nature. Once you cross its threshold, there's no turning back. Attempts to close the browser or disconnect from the internet prove futile. The room becomes your prison, and its name changes to match your username, marking your presence. The consequences of entering this grim online space are dire, often leading to torment, psychological suffering, and unspeakable horrors. It's a tale that has captured the imaginations of internet users, and it just shows the scariness of the internet. Alright, now into tier 6, starting off with Walking Sam. Walking Sam is a modern urban legend that has gained prominence within the Slekara Sioux community, primarily on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota. This eerie figure is often likened to be more widespread Slenderman legend, but within a unique cultural and societal context. The legend of Walking Sam centers around a tall, faceless entity that is said to roam the Pine Ridge Reservation. This entity is believed to target Native American youth, particularly those who struggle with depression, thoughts of S-word, or other mental health issues. Some versions of the legend even suggest that if someone sees Walking Sam, they may be driven to self-harm or contemplate S-word. One of these notable aspects of the urban legend is how it has been utilized within the Native American community. Rather than purely serving as a source of fear, Walking Sam has been turned into a symbol for raising awareness about mental health issues and S-prevention. 
Some individuals and organizations have used this legend to initiate discussions about the challenges faced by Native American youth and the importance of providing support and resources for those in need. The Seven Midnight Jogger is an urban legend that has been circulated in various forms. In this legend, a person goes jogging alone at midnight and encounters a series of eerie or supernatural events along their route. These events might include encountering ghastly figures, strange creatures, or experiencing paranormal phenomena. The specifics of the legend can vary widely, but it typically involves a solitary jogger who decides to run late at night, often on a deserted road, in a park, or through a forest. As they continue their run, they gradually become aware of the strange occurrences or mysterious figures that seem to be following them. Ultimately, the legend builds suspense and fear as the jogger becomes increasingly terrified by the supernatural events unfolding around them. The story often concludes with a shocking or unsettling twist. The Night Marchers The Night Marchers, also known as Hukaya Poi in Hawaiian culture, are part of the Hawaiian folklore and urban legends. According to Hawaiian mythology, the Night Marchers are the spirits of ancient Hawaiian warriors who rise from the graves and march at night to protect sacred sites, important leaders, or other significant places. They are often depicted as ghostly figures carrying torches, chanting, and playing drums. Encountering the Night Marchers is believed to be dangerous and an ominous sign. Hawaiian legends warn that if you come across the night marchers, you should lower yourself to the ground, avoid making eye contact, and play a special chant called the Iho Mai as a form of respect and protection. Looking at them directly or failing to show respect can lead to harm or even death. The belief in these night marchers is deeply rooted in Hawaiian culture. And stories about these spectral warriors have been passed down through generations. While some dismiss them as just legends, others take these tales very seriously and heed the warnings associated with them. The night marchers are a fascinating and eerie aspect of Hawaiian folklore and mythology. Alright, now on to tier 7, starting off with Stoll's Gateway to Hell. The Stoll Cemetery legend, often referred to as the Stoll Cemetery or the Gateway to Hell, is an infamous urban legend centered around Stoll Cemetery in Stoll, Kansas, United States. This legend has gained notoriety for its claims that the cemetery serves as a portal to hell or is associated with paranormal occurrences. At the heart of this legend is the belief that Stoll Cemetery is one of the seven gateways to hell on earth. According to the story, the devil himself is said to emerge from the cemetery during specific times, particularly on Halloween in the spring equinox. This legend has been firm, further embellished with reports of ghostly apparitions, strange sounds, and unexplained phenomena within the cemetery's grounds. Over the years, it has gained traction through internet forums, urban legends, and mentions in popular culture. Some versions of the legend even suggest that access to the cemetery is restricted, with locals guarding it to prevent trespassers. The Well to Hell urban legend is a captivating and chilling tale that emerged in the late 1980s, causing a stir in various forms of media and sparking discussions about the afterlife and the limits of scientific exploration. According to the intriguing legend, a group of Russian scientists or engineers embarked on a remarkable drilling project in Siberia, known as the Kola Superdeep Borehole. This borehole was a real-world endeavor undertaken by the Soviet Union during the 1970s and the 1980s, aiming to explore the Earth's crust to unprecedented deaths. The legend takes a hair-raising twist when it claims that, during the drilling process, the team reached a depth of approximately 7 miles and unexpectedly broke through to hell itself. In this terrifying narrative, the scientists reportedly lowered a microphone into the borehole to capture data from these remarkable depths. What they purportedly recorded sent shivers down their spines and became the stuff of nightmares. The unearthly and blood-curdling screams of tormented souls suffering in hell. This spine-tingling story has circulated widely through word of mouth, emails, and other forms of communication, leaving many to ponder its implications. However, it's essential to clarify that the Well to Hell legend is almost entirely devoid of concrete evidence to support its claims. While the Cola Superdeep borehole was indeed a genuine scientific undertaking, no verified recordings or scientific reports show that it has a gateway to hell. The Fatal Flare Urban Legend is a scary tale that is often shared in the context of a taxi or rideshare services. This unsettling story revolves around a passenger who, innocently seeking a ride, encounters a driver with hidden malevolent intentions or sinister secret. In this legend, the passenger initially believes they're dealing with an ordinary driver, but as the journey progresses, the driver's behavior becomes increasingly unsettling and disturbing. 
the passenger's sense of vulnerability intensifies as they realize they are isolated within the confines of the vehicle. As the story reaches its climax, the passenger often finds themselves in a life-threatened situation, narrowly escaping harm or even death through their own quick thinking, courage, or just sheer luck. Sometimes, they manage to send out a warning to others, preventing further potential victims from falling into the same dangerous trap. The Fatal Fair legend taps into the common fears related to getting into a vehicle with a stranger and underscores the vulnerability of being alone with someone whose true intentions are concealed. 10 Dreams The 10 Dreams Urban Legend is a scary narrative that has been passed around in various forms. It typically revolves around an individual who experiences a sequence of 10 increasingly horrifying dreams. What sets this legend apart is the gradual escalation of terror within each dream. At the outset, the dreams might seem ordinary or unremarkable, but as the dreamer progresses through them, they become progressively more nightmarish. The tension builds, and by the time they reach their 10th dream, the dreamer is often confronted by supernatural or paranormal entities. These entities typically issue ominous warnings, cautioning the dreamer against completing the final dream. The legend suggests that dire consequences will befall the dreamer in the waking world once they reach the 10th dream. Fear and paranormal grip the dreamer as they grapple with the terrifying visions and the foreboding knowledge that something dreadful awaits them. One of the unsettling aspects of this dream is that it's unresolved ending, leaving the fate of the dreamer up in the air. This open-endedness adds to the sense of mystery and unease surrounding the story. The Rat King Urban Legend is a dark and eerie tale that revolves around a group of rats mysteriously bound together, forming a grotesque and monstrous entity. This legend is characterized by its supernatural themes and foreboding atmosphere. In the legend, the Rat King is often comprised of six or more rats whose tails have become strangely knotted or entangled. What sets this legend apart is its attribution of the phenomena to supernatural forces suggesting that dark magic, curses, or powers are responsible for the rat's eerie fusion. This supernatural entity is depicted as a nightmarish creature with multiple heads, eyes, or limbs, amplifying its horrifying appearance. Encountering or witnessing the Rat King is believed to bring misfortune, illness, or even death to those who cross its path, adding to the sense of dread surrounding the legend. In some versions, the Rat King is woven into superstitions and folk beliefs, serving as an ominous omen of impending disaster or doom. The legend plays on primal fears of the unknown, the unnatural, and the uncanny, making it a very scary narrative. Alright, now on to tier 8, starting off with Water Babies. The Water Babies urban legend is a story that has intrigued and spooked people for generations. This eerie tale has taken on various forms and adaptations over the years, often depending on the region or culture in which it's told. At its core, the legend revolves around the belief that the spirits of infants who have met tragic and untimely deaths, particularly through drowning, linger in a supernatural form in bodies of water. These water babies are said to be trapped between the realms of the living and the afterlife for some reason, seeking some form of closure or solace. One common thread in the legend is the notion that these babies can be heard crying or wailing near bodies of water, especially during the night. These ghostly cries are said to be both heart-wrenching and chilling, sending shivers down the spines of anyone who hears them. Some versions of the story even suggest that these spirits can mimic the cries of real babies, luring curious or concerned individuals to the water's edge. There is a strong element of caution within the water baby's legend. It serves as a warning to people, particularly those living near bodies of water or in rural areas, about the potential dangers of approaching water alone, especially at night. The legend suggests that venturing too close to the water's edge can lead to encounters with these restless spirits, resulting in dire consequences for the unsuspecting. Epping Forest Pond There are several urban legends associated with ponds and bodies of water in Epping Forest, given the forest's rich history and the mysterious ambience of its woodlands. One of the most common urban legends is centered around a supposed creature or entity inhabiting the ponds. These legends often describe a mysterious creature lurking beneath the waters, much like the Loch Ness Monster or other lake and pond monster myths. In some versions of the legend, witnesses claim to have seen strange ripples or heard eerie sounds emanating from the depths of Epping Forest Pond leading to its speculation about the existence of hidden aquatic creatures. Pinky Pinky In the heart of South Africa, among the vibrant tapestry of local folklore and ghost stories, there exists a chilling tale known as the legend of Pinky Pinky. This urban legend has been whispered among school children for generations, sending shivers down their spines and making them think twice before venturing into the ominous territory of school restrooms. 
Pinky Pinky, as the story goes, is a spectral entity with a penchant for targeting young girls, lurking in the shadows of school bathrooms, which is just, you know, weird. What sets this supernatural being apart from its peculiar appearance, a figure draped in a pink tire with shockingly pink hair, which it derives its eerie monkey air, why it's called Pink Pinky Pinky, and the legend serves as dual purpose in South African culture. It serves as a cautionary tale warning children against venturing into restrooms alone, I guess, and especially during moments of solitude, this mere thought of Pinky Pinky's presence is enough to keep children from staying too far from the safety of their friends or teachers. The legend is fueled by a sense of mystery and dread. Those who dare to venture into the restroom alone might reportedly encounter Pinky Pinky. In some variations of the legend, Pinky Pinky is said to emerge from the mirrors or the toilets, while in others, it simply materializes in a ghostly form, ready to harm or abduct the unsuspecting child. Black Volga the legend of the Black Volga has its roots in the Eastern European immigration, where it has been whispered among communities for decades. The heart of this legend beats within the mysterious and menacing black car, often identified as the high-end Volga sedan. This vehicle becomes center character in a series of terrifying tales that has woven its way into the cultural fabric of the region. The Black Volga is typically depicted as an imposing automobile with jet black bodywork and windows tinted it so dark that they obscure the occupants from view. Its driver is shrouded in mystery, often portrayed as a shadowy chauffeur or a bedwitching woman with an air of malevolence. The legend revolves around the ominous car, which is believed to be the involved in a series of disturbing and inexplicable events. The stories vary, but they frequently involve the Black Volga abducting or targeting vulnerable individuals, with a particularly focus on children or young women. The motives behind these abductions range from the macabre, such as organ trafficking, to the supernatural, including rituals and oculate practices. In some versions of the legend, it's said that the Black Volga is the Hargbergen of doom appearing before disasters or tragic events. The legend of the Black Volga serves as a testament to the enduring power of folklore and urban legend. The Vanishing Hotel Room The Vanishing Hotel Room urban legend is a spine-tingling tale that is circulated in various forms and versions all around the world. This legend typically involves a traveler who checks into a hotel room for the night, only to experience a series of bizarre and unsettling events. In this legend, the traveler often arrives at a seemingly ordinary hotel, where they are assigned a room for the night. However, as the night progresses, strange things start to happen. These events can include furniture moving on its own, eerie sounds echoing through the room, and inexplicable apparitions or ghost figures appearing. The most unsettling part of the legend is when the traveler attempts to leave the room the next morning, only to find out it's been completely vanished. In some versions of the story, the hotel staff denies the existence of the room altogether, leaving the traveler baffled and terrified. The vanishing hotel room legend plays on the fear of the unknown and the idea that the, even the most mundane and familiar places like a hotel room can become a source of horror and confusion. It also raises questions about reality, perception, and the nature of supernatural. All right, now into tier nine, the second to last tier of the entire iceberg. And I hope you've enjoyed this video so far. And if you have, subscribe and like since you're already an hour in. But now starting off with 999 phone charging or 999 phone charging. This urban legend is a modern tale that serves as a cautionary reminder about the potential dangers of using public charging stations or borrowing charging cables from strangers. This legend often goes something like this. A person is out and about when they notice their smartphone's battery is critically low, like we've all experienced, I'm sure. In a moment of desperation, they approach a charging station or ask a stranger if they can borrow a charging cable. The helpful stranger agrees and hands them a cable and directs them to a charging station. This person plugs in their phone and is relieved as their charging process begins. However, as their phone charges, they notice the strange behavior the stranger is doing and messages on their device. In some versions, it's a message that says something like, access granted. In others, it might be unfamiliar apps installing themselves, or the phone settings suddenly changing. Realizing that something is weird, the person quickly unplugs their phone, and the legend usually concludes with the revelation that the stranger or the charging station itself was hacking their phone. This charger or cable was rigged to access the person's phone and potentially steal personal information or install malware. Phantom Social Workers I think I've covered Phantom Social Workers 
three different times in three videos i'm pretty sure in the conspiracy theory iceberg and another video but why not just for the giggles and laughs let's cover it a third time and i wonder if i'll cover it again in another video but anyways let's just get into it the phantom social worker Urban Legend is a harrowing and cautionary tale that has circulated in various forms over the years. It often revolves around a parent or guardian receiving a visit or phone call from an individual claiming to be a social worker from a government agency or child protective of services. In this legend, the supposed social worker usually informs the parent that there have been reports and concerns about the welfare of their child. The parent is often told that they must cooperate with an investigation and their child may be taken into protective custody if they fail to comply. The social worker often asserts their authority and may even arrive at their home in an official looking vehicle and attire. What makes this urban legend particularly scary is the sense of urgency and intimidation involved. The parent or guardian is often pressured to comply immediately, which can lead to panic and confusion for the parent. In some versions of the story, the so-called social worker may request personal information or access to the child's room. The twist in this legend typically occurs when the parent becomes suspicious or contacts actual authorities to verify the social worker's identity. It's at this point where they discover that there's no record of an investigation or a social worker at their house, and the person they encountered was an imposter with potentially nefarious intentions. The phantom social worker legend is pretty scary, considering that government agents could just be fake, and especially when it's around your children, that makes it even scarier. KFC chicken is not actually chicken, and it's as simple as that. KFC chicken isn't chicken, and I couldn't really find anything official on this, but do with this information as you will. The Baby Train The Baby Train is a legend that typically revolves around the idea that there is a mysterious train that comes through a small town or remote locations in the dead of night, picking up unwanted or abandoned babies. In this legend, the train is often described as an old and eerie, with dimly lit carriages, and its arrival is shrouded in mystery, and the townspeople are warned never to be out at night when the baby train is said to appear. The legend suggests that parents who no longer want their infants or who are unable to care for them can leave their babies at designated spots, and the train will come to collect them, providing them a new home or a better life. All right. Now onto the final tier of the iceberg, the urban legend iceberg, and on to tier 10, and first entry being Ratman. And no, not GTA. The Ratman urban legend is a tale that has been shared in various forms over the years, typically as a spooky story or cautionary tale. The legend usually centers around a mysterious individual known as the Ratman, who is said to inhabit a particularly area or location. In this legend, the Ratman is often depicted as a hermit-like figure with a peculiar appearance. Sometimes it's with features resembling a rat, such as sharp teeth or pointed ears. The Ratman is said to live in seclusion, usually in a remote or abandoned place, such as an old house, cave, or underground tunnel. The legend frequently attributes unsettling or malevolent behavior to the Ratman. He is rumored to be a danger to anyone who crosses his path, especially children who are warned to stay away from his territory. Some versions of the story suggest that he is responsible for mysterious disappearance or acts of vandalism in the area. The London Monster was not just an urban legend, but rather a real historical figure who terrorized London in the late 18th century. The London Monster was an infamous assailant known for his series of attacks on women in the streets of London between 1788 and 1790. The attacker's usual thing was involved accosting women in public places and stabbing them with sharp implement, often in the buttocks or thighs. These attacks were usually sudden and unprovoked. The attacker targeted women from various social backgrounds and ages, and the London monster's reign of terror caused widespread panic and led to increased surveillance and patrols in the city. Many women started to carry protective devices like needles or pins as a means of self-defense. The public's fear was further fueled by news reporting of the attacks in newspapers. Ultimately, the London monster was actually captured in 1790. His name was Reinwick Williams, and he was put on trial. Williams was found guilty of unlawfully and maliciously wounded women and was sentenced to a period of imprisonment. The motive behind his attacks remains a subject of debate, with some suggesting that he was just seeking notoriety or attention. And now for the final entry in the iceberg. The actual cowhead story. 
This story is allegedly an urban legend from Japan about a story so terrifying that anyone who reads it will either die or go insane. So hopefully anyone listening or watching doesn't die or go insane and hopefully I don't die or go insane. But the story goes that these readings became shivering before eventually perishing altogether. Sites claiming to provide information about this cow head myth often uses the word name Gozu to describe the central character of this myth. A character with the body of a man or boy in the head of a cow or an ox. In some retellings, this cowhead creature features in a story in which the bones of said creature are uncovered and revealed to be related to an early incident in which residents of a particular village are starving to death. They have eaten their last cattle and even their pets when a stranger comes to the village with, you guessed it, the head of a cow and the body of a human. The villagers then set out the poor bovine headed boy and devour him too. According to the somewhat dubious sources, the town authorized broke the super scary tale up into separate pieces in order to make it readable or destroyed. Altogether, the copies of the story. This in itself is a superish claim as the nature of urban legends dictates that they are rarely transmitted in written form and in the first place are rather orally transmitted. So it can just be completely inaccurate because it's just orally transmitted and nothing's written down to be really factual. This Gozu legend in the cowhead myth it seems to be connected to the Japanese movie titled Gozu, where a prominent character sports a cow-headed appearance. However, it's essential to delve deeper into the connection to understand its true origins and implications. Gozu, despite its associated with the cowhead myth, draws its roots from Japanese and Chinese mythologies, specifically Buddhism. In these mythologies, Gozu plays a role as a guardian figure, not a harbinger of fear or an urban legend. So not really what I explained in the beginning, because this is is more of the truth, I guess. And this important distinction highlights that Gozu is not inherently linked to a frightening narrative, but instead to a spiritual and cultural context. Within the realm of Japanese folklore, we encounter Kudan, a fascinating creature featuring a cow's body and a human head. Kudan is renowned for its ability to predict disasters such as earthquakes, famines, and wars. It's plausible that the Kudan myth contributed to the confusion surrounding Gozu and the scary story associated with it. Expanding our perspective on world mythology, we came across another cow-headed creature, most notably the Minotaur in Greek mythology. The Minotaur, with its human body and bull's head, is a well-known figure associated with the labyrinth on the island of Crete. Intriguingly, in the online version of the cowhead story, the cow-headed character often appears as a victim rather than a messing monster. This narrative choice aligns with a long-sharing storytelling trope where something seemingly ordinary has the power to incite fear or harm merely through its experience, a concept referred to as a brown note. In conclusion, the cowhead myth is a complex narrative with many origins and cultural influences, but it really isn't a bad thing. And it comes from many different cultures, but you can take it however you want. It can be the evil thing. It can be a good cultural icon. Who knows? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And all right, that wraps up the Urban Legend Iceberg. I hope you enjoyed. Kind of a different iceberg, I guess. And just hope you enjoyed the video in general. And if you're still watching, subscribe and like and help me reach my goal of 50k. And comment ideas and feedback down below. It really helps a ton. So anyways... Thanks for watching, and until next time, see ya.